Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I want to talk about something that's really super important to all of us, whether you're a prepper or whether you're not a prepper. There's a big blind spot that a lot of us have, myself included, and that I'm always having to you know, consciously work on it, and I want to talk about that in this video. Super, super important really has to do with all the plans that we all lay. But before that, I want to just take a moment to thank people who have been helping me with my little pet project. Uh, you guys know who you are. I've got a kids channel that has kids alphabets, colors, foreign languages, things of that nature. I've been trying to monetize it for the longest time, and it's been a really hard road because in order to monetize a channel here on YouTube, you need to have a lot of people subscribed and a lot of people watching your video, uh, or a lot of hours uh, of videos watched. And for my channel, it's the kind of thing people would like look up a video to use but nobody really subscribes to the channel because it's just like a reference channel you, you get it when you want to see a, an alphabet played for your kids and also the videos are all really short so it you know it's really hard to get all those hours logged what i've been doing and what so many of you guys have been helping me uh do and what i could and the reason i'm bringing it up is i could use a little bit more help uh is uh if you have the means uh which means if you have a computer that's capable of playing YouTube videos, which I presume you do, uh, if you can go over to the link down below, it's my kids' channel. Please, if you could, just subscribe to it. Turn off uh, notifications, or actually, you don't even have to turn them off. Just never turn them on. Uh, just subscribe to it. We need a, a you know we need a couple hundred more subscribers to the channel, and we need a couple hundred more watch hours. So if you have the means to pop over there, subscribe. I don't know, play, I've got a playlist there. You could play it in the background while you're working on your computer. I'd really uh, appreciate it. And also it would help help me to get an extra revenue stream into my house, which will free up more of my free time that I don't have to take as many freelance projects. That's the way I kind of you know put food on the table here. Uh, if I can have an, an, a different revenue stream that isn't sucking up my time, then I can put more time in on this channel and specifically the Alien Invasion uh, series. Uh, coming up next week, potentially, I could be releasing a second episode of Alien Invasion, but we're not at the funding thresholds over at Patreon yet. Uh, but if, again, you guys can help me with this kids channel and get the, uh, you know, the watch hours up and the subscribers up so that I can get it monetized, if you guys get me over that goal, uh, that goal line, uh, I will just start releasing two episodes a month. Uh, for everyone that, had, that has seen it over on Patreon, uh, I release all the episodes as soon as they're done over there. I just released episode number six. And for anyone that's been watching the series up through episode six, uh, you know, it kind of starts off slow, but then things start ramping up. And, you know, people who have already seen episode six over Patreon know that. So I'm, I'm excited to get these episodes out to you guys. So if you can help me with that, links down below. But let's talk about what I wanted to talk about in this video today, which is this really important, uh, you know, kind of blind spot for a lot of us. And what it is, uh, is something that is oftentimes refer referred to as normalcy bias. At least it's referred to as norm uh, normalcy bias by us in the prepping community. When we see people that don't prep and we, we say, well, they have a normalcy bias. They think that things are always gonna continue to remain normal all the time. Uh, you know, we've seen ample evidence over the past couple of years that that is not the case. If you go back and look through history books, you know that's certainly not the case. There's no such thing as normal for humans. And if there is, it is that we're like sporadic hunter-gatherer groups over the planet. Most of human existence has been that awful daily grind with, you know, saber-toothed tigers trying to kill us and everything. You know, normal isn't something you necessarily want to get back to, but normal is like an idea that people have in their mind, and a lot of people get addicted to that idea. We've seen people, uh, you know, uh, going into COVID, people who had that, you know, what we preppers call normalcy bias, uh, have all sorts of issues, you know, psychological issues, trauma issues, depression issues, uh, when they are forced from the normal world that they're used to into a world that they're not used to, which is, you know, what we've been in the past couple of years. Very minor changes. I mean, you know, a lot of people have died with COVID. It's not a nothing disease. It's something that's impacted a lot of families. But in terms of, uh, you know, SHTF events and certainly, you know, plagues and illnesses uh, that have, you know, been historic throughout uh, human history that have, you know, killed a heck of a lot more people uh, or at least a higher percentage of the population than COVID has. COVID has been a very small bump, you know, relatively speaking, uh, but it's had a huge, uh, 
damaging impact on a lot of people's lives because they've had that normalcy bias. And now I see that normalcy bias in people in the, uh, you know, the regular world. I like to call that, you know, if you're not in the prepping world, you're in the regular world. Uh, now there's that normalcy bias that's really driving a lot of people's drive towards vaccines. And I know this is a hot topic. I know that I differ from a lot of you guys on this topic. With me and vaccines, uh, you know, I'm not anti-vax at all. I have all like the normal classic vaccines that have been around for many years. I've gotten those into my boy. I feel like they have a long track record. They've been proven effective, safe, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I've been reluctant on the COVID vaccines because they are so new and they have been pushed through relatively quickly. And I feel like we're still in a testing period uh, with the COVID vaccines. And I think that uh, reality has borne me out on that. You know, we've seen, you know, CDC uh, calling emergency meetings like, you know, there's uh, this issue. Let's stop administering the vaccine to this group because there might be this problem with this group. Uh, okay, you know, actually that one was fine. You know, and, and they keep kind of doing this. I mean, as far as I know at the moment, I, at least at the time of this recording, the Moderna vaccine, I think, has been permanently pulled from people's 60 years of age or older. And at the beginning, it was just like, uh, you know, get it out into their arms, get it into their arms. Uh, so this is really a testing phase. And I, I really believe that. And that doesn't mean that the vaccine uh, doesn't work. That doesn't mean that over time it might turn out to be great, a wonderful idea. Uh, for me, I just don't feel like I know that yet. I want a little bit more testing and I'm kind of relying on things like N95 masks, social distancing and all that kind of stuff. Plus just, you know, not, not, going out and mixing with people that much, you know, uh, you know, just kind of like taking a, a step back. Uh, and that's what I've been doing uh, with that. And I know that puts me in a different position from many people around me. But a lot of the um, uh, a lot of people in like, again, that no the normal world are really pushing the idea of like everyone's going to get a vaccine, you know, get it into your arm, you know, let's just accept it and get back to normal. And I think that really comes down to that normalcy bias, that normalcy addiction, that I that addiction to the idea that science always comes and science always solves our problem. Uh, and you know, that's not a, a it's not a bad uh, bet a lot of the time. Uh, you know, very frequently, you know, science has come in and swept in just at the right time and it's, you know, solved what seemed like an intractable problem. And people have gotten so used to that idea, people have gotten so used to the idea that that always happens and has happened so many times in the past that every time it looks like that has the potential of happening again, that that's what is about to happen. And that's not a guarantee. You know, we've gotten used to that idea that, you know, science is going to solve our problems, but it's it's not a, like a, a law of nature that that's always going to be the case. And that's one, uh, you know, pushback that I have against people that, you know, say it's like, you know, don't worry about like, you know, the potential side effects of the vaccine. You know, it, it's only really been a matter of months. It's been on a lot of people's bodies. You know, uh, you know, don't you don't have to worry about like what are the, you know, multi-year, uh, you know, impacts of that or long term or any of that kind of stuff, you know. People get vaccines all the time and, you know, the, the world's never ended over them yet. <laughs> so, you know, uh, many of us in the prepping community kind of like see the, the, the fallacy in that logic. And, you know, we're like, you know, you never know. So like it's it's we think it's kind of nice to play it safe. But and here's where I'm going to pivot here. Uh, but that kind of normalcy bias doesn't just apply to people outside the prepping community. It applies to us as well. And I'm going to change the name of it from normalcy bias to expectational bias. Uh, for people out in like the regular world, their expectation of the future is that it is going to be normal. It's going to be like what they're used to. Uh, if things go weird, they're always going to come back relatively quickly, you know, especially if you, you know, uh, just get the shot in your arm or whatever, you know, things are going to come back to normal. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, just, you know, trust that that's where uh, the natural order of things is going is like, you know, there's a, a normal baseline. It may get bumped away from that, but it's going to come back. Um, that's their expectation. And we in the preparedness uh, com uh, community uh, have other expectations, uh, but they are still expectations and they are, uh, they are predictions of what's going to happen in the future in the same way that someone in the, the, you know, the normal world uh, says that their prediction of the future, they don't phrase it this way, but this is what's going on, their prediction of the future is that things will go back to normal. You know, uh, you know just trust in this and that and the other thing things are going to go back to normal. You know, uh, that, that's where things are headed. That's a prediction of the future, and people in the prepping and preparedness community have our own predictions of the future, and they're numerous in our community. I mean, there are people that are, uh, their prediction of the future is that there's an imminent nuclear war, that the poles are about to shift, that the Earth is going to rotate on its axis. There are people that, uh, you know, think that there's going to be, like, some kind of a massive superbug, or that, you know, some one country is going to invade another country. There are people 
uh, there are crazy channels right here on YouTube that have uh, openly stated that they think that aliens are going to invade by airdropping bird flu infected clown zombies. Who knows about the credibility of these people? <laughs> but uh, uh, all of us in the prepping and preparedness community have our expectations as well. And, and that can very easily become an expectational bias if we don't realize and see it for what it really is. Just recently I was talking to somebody, uh, uh, very briefly, uh, and uh, they saw some old video I, uh, that I had made about um, uh, Trump when he was first coming in, and there was some question as to uh, you know, how he was going to handle uh, gun control legislation, whether there was something that was going to be pushed, you know, whether he was like a wolf in sheep's clothing or a sheep in wolf's clothing, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, and um, uh, you know, there was some question about like how that was going to go. Well, someone took that opportunity uh, to make a very clever comment <laughs> that uh, went something along the lines of, well, now with Biden, you know, now we can see, you know, uh, how do you like what Biden's doing with guns? Um, well, that was an expectation that they have on their part about where things are going to go. I have firearms. I have plenty of firearms. I still got them. None of them have been taken away from me. None of them have been declared illegal. None of them, uh, you know, have had tracking numbers put on them. Uh, you know, nothing's changed for me. At the moment, nothing's changed. So uh, there are very, many people out there that confuse their thoughts about what the future might be with what, you know, the future will be, A, or even what the present is. There's a lot of confusion, of, uh, you know, people confusing their expectations with reality. And that's something that all of us do. Uh, that, whether you are, um, you know, just a normal person in the normal world that doesn't prepare for anything, or people here in the preparedness community, we do it as well. And that's one of the big reasons why on my channel, whenever I talk about preps, whenever I talk about preparedness, I really like to emphasize the things that have uh, a lot of benefits outside of whether anything ever happens. One example is right here behind me, and that's why I staged this shot right here, is uh, my root cellar. Right now it's a root cellar. It's very helpful. It's a place where I can put extra produce when I uh, buy it at the store. I have a garden, and if I ever get really particularly successful in gardening, hopefully I'll have a, uh, a surplus of you know pumpkins and squash and things at the end of the year. I'll be able to store them there through the winter. It's a really great asset, but it could also be a fallout shelter. I designed it so it could be a fallout shelter. It has the right kind of geometric shielding and everything in there so that it'd be uh, useful if there was ever some kind of a fallout event, you know, a, you know, nuclear power plant going down, nuclear war, any of that kind of stuff. But it has value to me whether or not those things ever happen. And the reason that I think that's so important is because none of us really know what the future holds. There are all sorts of uh, possibilities and potentials out there, and it really it gets dangerous when you forget that just because something has the potential of happening, uh, that doesn't mean that it has happened, that doesn't mean that it will happen, and it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you're always going to be right about everything. Uh, you know, just because whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we do the best that we can to look into the future. We uh, try to think about the things that have the potential of, of occurring and, you know, we, we prep against them. But it's really important to remember that normalcy bias, that expectational bias that is in all people, that you have it, that I have it. And whenever you can kind of hedge against that, whenever you can, uh, you know, prep your mind for the fact that just because you think something may happen, doesn't mean that it's absolutely going to happen and you know honest to god a lot of the things that people think are going to happen oftentimes it's not even all, all that likely so think about that in yourself uh, try to check yourself whenever you can you're really doing yourself a service when you entertain the thought in your mind the things i'm thinking right now could be wrong i do this all the time whenever i start feeling really certain about something i consciously try to expose myself to uh uh, contrary opinions uh, that might, uh, you know, kind of round out my thinking on it, maybe uh, possibly change my thinking, tweak my thinking on it. And uh, that's one of the things that I find is a huge value in this channel and bringing it to you guys because, uh, you know, uh, my channel at the time of this recording has like something a little over 11,000 subscribers. And I think, honest to God, you guys are, have got to be one of the best groups of subscribers, the most elite group of subscribers in the prepping and preparedness community because we are so eclectic and I've tried to really curate the audience so that the people that are here, you and other people watching this video right now, are the types of people that are open to listening to other ideas because we are always stronger 
when we are open to other people's thoughts, open to other people's opinions and views on things, because that's the way that we grow, that's the way that we enhance our own abilities. The people that think that they have it all figured out are always, in my opinion, the dumbest people around because they have closed everything off, nothing else comes in, and they think that they've, uh, they've got it all set. When people do that, it's bad news for them and their families. When countries do that, it's kind of the same situation. So whenever you have the opportunity, check your, your thoughts, check your ideas, and always uh, keep in mind the idea that whatever you're thinking is going to happen may not. So plan for that as well. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I'm going to remind you guys, Link down below if you can subscribe to that thing. It'd be super helpful. And if we can make that goal, getting that channel monetized, I will start sliding out extra alien invasion episodes because, you know, you guys help me out and you're allowing me to spend more time to do that stuff. And, you know, we all benefit from that. Thank you very much. And thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.